enzyme activity is regulated in a few ways, so let's take it a second to point out some of the factors about enzymes. Enzymes are proteins, so we know from studying our macromolecules that proteins are the most widely varied of all the macromolecules, um, and enzymes are an example of that. Proteins can be broken down when not in ideal conditions. That's why we have things like hypothermia that are so uh, da dangerous and deadly. So the condition requirements for proteins or for enzymes can include temperature and pH. They have to have the ideal temperature and pH settings. Um, so let's kind of give you an example to help you remember that. If you are an athlete and you have the choice of running your uh, national competition for, let's say, track, um, and you get to pick whether or not you run in the summer, the fall, or the winter. Well, the summer, it's like 100 degrees outside and, and humid. In the fall, it's like a nice, like 70, between 60 and 70, not very humid. Um, and then in the winter, it's like 32 degrees outside and maybe a little bit of snow. Well, you're probably going to pick to run in the fall because you're going to run your best time when the temperature is ideal. Uh, when it's super hot, you're probably going to be a little more sluggish. When it's super cold, your body's going to be using a lot of your energy that you have just to keep you warm, not to be running. So you might be a little sluggish then. So you're going to pick that appropriate time, that best time for you to run according to the temperature that, you, that it is outside. So enzymes are the same way. Temperature, pH, and regulatory molecules can all affect the activity of an enzyme. Enzymes are regulated by two types of inhibitors, an allosteric inhibitor and a competitive inhibitor. So let's go back to using, um, using our relationship analogy to explain this enzyme activity regulation. So an allosteric inhibitor binds somewhere other than the active site and a competitive inhibitor binds to the enzyme at the active site. So here's a picture for you. So a competitive inhibitor, if this is molecule uh, AB or, yeah, we'll call it AB, and AB is binding to this enzyme in order to be broken apart, right? Um, it cannot fit into this enzyme because of its competitive inhibitor. They are literally fighting for the same active site. So this I always think about as like the cheater in the relationship. So if it's a molecule AB or um, molecule A and molecule B, this is the the cheater and the the person in the middle competing for the same guy and causing issues with this AB binding to the enzyme. A non-competitive inhibitor I think of like the nagging uh, mother-in-law. The nagging mother-in-law changes the shape of the, uh, let's just say sun, and causes it to not be able to react with the, um, as it should with the enzyme. So it binds here, changes the shape of the enzyme, and then the substrate cannot bind to the enzyme like it like it should. Uh, see how this kind of folded in on its side? So a non-competitive inhibitor is not directly interfering with the enzyme, but like a competitive inhibitor would be, but is still changing the shape. We call that a com conformational change 
with the non-competitive inhibitor. And that concludes all of Unit 2.